Brothers and sisters, it is truly an honor and a privilege for me to be standing here today representing the AFL-CIO in a sport where history was created 100 years ago. Although the strikers were not union members themselves, the 400,000 members of the state mass AFL-CIO that we represent today are proud descendants of those workers who walked out of this mill in 1912. Looking back at the poor working conditions that existed in the mills, the pitiful wages earned by the workers, it's easy to think of this strike as being inevitable. But to think of it as being inevitable is to downplay the tremendous courage of these strikers and the many factors that could have easily caused this strike to end in defeat. One of those factors was the ethnic diversity that existed in Lawrence at the time and something that the mill owners took full advantage of to squash any sense of solidarity. The mill owners attempted to pit the different ethnic groups against one another, particularly old immigrants against young immigrants. Mill owners would pay the old immigrants from Britain and Ireland and Germany more than the new immigrants from Armenia, from Italy and Russia and elsewhere who were blamed for taking jobs and dragging down living conditions throughout the city. For a long time, these tactics worked in making workers bitter towards one another and kept them from joining together. Even after the strike began, the mill owners refused to meet with the strikers, and they believed the tensions between ethnic groups would cause the solidarity to unravel soon enough but as we all know, that never happened. And the way in which these workers from different backgrounds overcame their divisions and joined together is an unprecedented, unprecedented point of history at that time in 1912. And it still remains an inspiration to so many of us. Today we still see the tensions between old immigrants and new immigrants and how they try to pit them against each other it's only the countries that have changed today in this nation. We see the private sector's workers being pitted against the public sector's workers. We see the divide at the ballot box by social issues when we should be voting together on issues that affect our security, our pensions, our health care, and our retirement. We need not, we need to stop fighting each other and start working together for a better quality of life in every community of this state. We owe, we owe a lot to the Bread and Roses strikers. Their victory here in Lawrence opened the door to many other victories which led to health and safety laws, to the 40-hour work week, the abolishment of child labor laws, and many things that we take for granted. And one, for all of you to think about, when Susan spoke, and I think the Congresswoman, they said 56 hours down to 54. 56 hours is one third of our week. One third of our week was in this mill. Think of that for those workers. Eight hours a day for seven days. That is unbelievable. And they only cut it to 54 at that point, And then tried to take the money away. But perhaps the greatest legacy of the Bread and Roses strike is their example. These strikers provided us with a shining example of what can be accomplished when workers realize that their common interests trump the superficial differences that may divide them. We have the opportunity through this exhibit here today and all of the fascinating history that exists about this strike to look at the playbook and to that led to one of the most fascinating, amazing victories in the history of working people right here in Lawrence. So in the spirit of Mother Jones, I'll close with 
we should pray for the dead and fight like hell together for the woman. For the woman and the man. For the let me try that again. We should